everyone, welcome back to another hardware news episode. NVIDIA decided that launching two video cards in one month wasn't enough, so the RTX 2070 is on the way. And also, regarding RAM prices, if you thought price fixing wasn't a thing, we'll be talking about that more today as well. Uh, further, AMD, there are rumors of a Polaris revisit, a, a re-revisit of Polaris. There is an Ampere computing unveil but it's not the one that you might remember from NVIDIA, and we have plenty of other news items for this week as well. Before that, this video is brought to you by PowerColor's RX 580 8GB card, which is marked down to $200 with rebate, starting September 29th on Newegg, and that is for the 8GB model. If you're looking for a mid-range video card for gaming on high settings, consider PowerColor's 8GB RX 580 that we linked below. The card also comes with three free games, including Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Star Control, and Strange Brigade. While supplies last, learn more at the link below. So the first major news item, of course, is us. We're gearing up for a Rip J2, or it might be three by the time this video goes up. Jay responded on Twitter to our beating of his Time Spy Extreme score with NV-linked GPUs, and he beat ours by about 100 more Time Spy Extreme points. So we're going to retaliate to that. Uh, first of all, the immediate goal is to do some memory overclocking, timings, tuning, stuff like that, and see, can I beat his score with just what we have without further modification? And then, because I know he will definitely respond to that, because he hooked up his test bench to an AC unit directly, we are we, we bought a bunch of gear. Uh, so memory module cooling, for example, picked up some more water blocks so we can put the GPUs properly underwater this time and stuff like that. So this, this battle is far from over. It'll be a lot of fun. And of course, thank you to Jay for joining. I think Paul picked up his bridges as well, so he might join in too. But either way, keep an eye out for that. Uh, the, the immediate responses have been via Twitter, but we'll of course bring them to video as soon as we get the scores up there. Just a lot of other stuff going on first, like waiting for shipping to retaliate properly to Jay. Uh, so first major news item, Samsung is looking to possibly limit its production, which would help maintain high prices on memory. Samsung is now anticipating demand to be less than originally expected for DRAM and NAND, with bit growth being lower than originally forecast. Samsung fears demand will soften as the market could reach oversupply, and in order to shore up high prices, Bloomberg says that Samsung could cut back on production of chips to keep supply tight, and thus prices favorable. For them, anyway. There continues to be speculation of the market being somewhat inundated with DRAM, finally, as smartphone sales slow and laptop shipments are expected to be interrupted. If Samsung makes moves to curtail production and augment supply, SK Hynix and Micron could very well follow suit, which would keep memory prices high into the foreseeable future. And there's been some discussion on potential price fixing in the memory market. Nothing's been firmly proven yet, but uh, there have been legal complaints filed in the US, and then in China, there's an active investigation by a branch of the Chinese government. So uh, still waiting to hear back on that. It'll be a while, it's a slow process. But uh, that's been something that has been discussed in the past, and certainly this would feed into the uh, theories that there might be some price fixing afoot. Ampere computing, so this is, if you remember, before Turing, the rumored name of NVIDIA's GPU is Ampere. And that never happened. It might in the future, we don't know, but uh, it ended up being Turing. So what we know now, though, is that Intel President Renee James launched her own semiconductor business, which is called Ampere Computing, and it's unveiling an EMAG processor and a new roadmap coming up that targets specifically ARM-based server chips. So this is beneficial in offering lower power consumption and security benefits over the compromised x86 chips that are out now, i.e. Spectre and Meltdown. And to this end, Ampere's already unveiled its EMAG processor and a future roadmap. The first batch of CPUs come in 16 and 32 core variants. And the company has already picked up two major customers, one of which being Microsoft and the other being Lenovo. These CPUs should start at about $550 for the 16 core model and about $850 for the 32 core chip. These are not consumer CPUs, but we wanted to bring them up because it's an important development in the market, especially given all the reporting that everyone's done on Spectre and Meltdown because these are uh, somewhat directly related to bypassing those concerns. And this uses ARM V8A cores built on 16 nanometer FinFET process from TSMC, if you're curious about that. So it should be low power and security benefits over x86. 
which will compete directly with both Intel and AMD in the server markets. A post on Chipel recently indicated a move to Polaris 30 on 12 nanometer TSMC silicon. If the rumor holds true, there would be potential for down-costed versions of the RX 580 cards with potential power consumption improvements, depending on how much AMD pushes the clocks, if at all. Pharonix, the leading benchmarking site for hardware on Linux, noticed a new Polaris device ID in a recent kernel patch. This is interesting timing for AMD to capitalize on a market that has rebelled against the new flagship cards, from NVIDIA of course, but it must still compete with the remaining Pascal stock in the 1060 class. Vega 56 has held strong against the 1070 cards, it just has never really been available until recently, thanks to the mining boom and now bust, but it does look like Polaris could be returning for a reprisal of the mid-range market role. Next up, Nvidia publicly announced the RTX 2070 to launch on October 17th and declared an MSRP of $500 for partner models or $600 for the FE card. We're curious to see the lowest price of partner models that pop up, but it does look like the FE card used the same external ID as the other 20 series releases. The shroud is identical, just the cooler might be different. We would guess that most good partner models will end up around $600, but don't have firm pricing just yet. The RTX 2070 will use a new TU-106 package rather than being a cut down version of the RTX 2080's die, and we also don't know the die size on that, but it has been officially announced by Nvidia for October 17th, if you didn't have enough from the other 20 series cards. Separately, it appears as if Nvidia has announced its Founders Edition customers a second delay in RTX 2080 Ti orders. The new arrival date has been pushed out to October 5th to 9th, although some customers will receive them earlier than that. Arrival is based upon supply of the card. AMD also backed the news for a Ryzen Raven Ridge APU lineup launch. This one's aimed at high-end gaming laptops, moving away from desktops for a moment. So the Ryzen R72800H and R52600H are the new APUs. They are four core eight thread parts both offering a configurable TDP in the range of 34 watts to 54 watts, depending on what the partner making the laptop wants to achieve. The R72800H offers Vega 11 Radeon graphics, and it's also got 11 CUs for that, so compute units, uh, which would be the container for the streaming processors, and there's a base or boost of 3.3 to 3.8 gigahertz on the CPU. Meanwhile, the R52600H comes equipped with Vega 8 graphics, and that one runs eight CUs, as indicated by the name. There's no word yet on availability or what price, what price we should expect for the laptops with the APUs, but we do know that they're coming out uh, sometime in the near future. It looks like AMD could be facing a shortage with its A320 and B450 motherboards and also, although we haven't heard of this one in a while, the A68 series of motherboards to a much lesser extent. So this problem seems to be mostly limited to the China market right now. And the demand here for AMD's entry level boards is strong enough that it is helping to create or at least exacerbate this shortage. The increase in demand for entry-level boards is partly stemming from bundling deals going on right now, and that would, again, include the vendors of those chipsets. So uh, A320, B450, and A68 are mostly affecting the ASUS, Gigabyte, and MSI low-end boards right now, and those are the ones that are most impacted by this shortage. So to keep prices stable and mitigate the shortages, the affected vendors have canceled current bundling promotions, and ASUS has plans for production expansion to help meet the demand of those entry-level boards right now. Also dealing with shortages is still Intel. We've been talking about this for actually a couple of months now, but Intel has been facing issues with their 10 nanometer process production, of course, and then the 14 nanometer process is now being used more heavily because they need something, and it's not 10 nanometer. So that means that the lower end chipsets are now eating away at the node that is required for making CPUs at this point. So Intel is moving its H310 chipset back to 22 nanometers from 14, so that I can then relieve that fab space for CPU production. And this means that the H310 motherboard will be using an older process, although the effects or importance of that is questionable, just considering that it is an extremely low-end part. Uh, the new H310 chipset, new in quotes, will be known as the H310C, so it will be marked differently, and it's expected to eventually replace existing product SKUs using the vanilla 14 nanometer H310 chipset. Speaking of this, Intel is looking at expanding its 14 nanometer production testing 
uh, facilities because of the 14 nanometer bottleneck they're facing right now, just in terms of availability, product supply. So our favorite website, Tom's Hardware, and writer Paul Alcorn, who we've actually met and is uh, a great reporter in this space, uh, wrote this article about Intel expanding its testing facilities and dealing with this new supply issue. So Intel has several 14 nanometer products in the pipeline simultaneously. They've got Coffee Lake, for example. They have chipsets. They have Coffee Lake at Refresh. They have Whiskey Lake. They have Amber Lake. They really, really like bodies of water at Intel. And then they also have XMM7560 modems for Apple's uh, iPhones, among other things. So these documents obtained by Tom's Hardware suggested that the testing capacity is as much of the problem as the fab space at this point, even though all indications previously have pointed toward fab space limitations. So to hopefully alleviate this problem, the documents detail plans for some of Intel's 14 nanometer silicon to be sent to facilities in Vietnam for testing, where the testing will be done under Intel's, quote, copy exactly, exclamation point, program. This program allows for processes like testing, packaging, and production to be replicated theoretically perfectly. It just will be done somewhere else. And that should hopefully help Intel out going forward with their production and supply limitations. We had a lot of smaller news items to go over this week as well. So in rapid fire format, let's go over a few of them. EK Waterblocks announced the successor to their venerable EK Supremacy CPU Waterblock, and that is the EK Velocity. The Velocity will come in 14 different models, all supporting EKWB's fifth iteration of their cooling design. Among the changes are a new mounting bracket, fewer flow restrictions, and more uniform RGB implementation. Prices range from $97 to $135, and they are expected to ship by October 1st. Fractal has released tempered glass window kits aimed at users wanting to get in on the trend and replace their acrylic windows. The tempered glass windows will be offered in two different kits, and those are for the Fractal Define R5 and the Define S, both of which will now have tempered glass options. Newegg recently revealed that from the dates of August 13th, 2018 to September 18th, 2018, they were affected by a malware attack orchestrated by Magecart, the online attack group recently known for attacking Ticketmaster and British Airways. The Newegg attack was done by redirecting users to a Magecart server disguised as Newegg's payment processing page, where malicious JavaScript ran on the back end, acting like a card skimmer and acquiring payment details such as names, addresses, and card details. This disguised domain even had a fake certificate given to create the impression of legitimacy. Newegg has since acknowledged the vulnerability and has emailed customers whom they believe to be affected. Newegg is currently investigating the attack, and if any of our readers or viewers shopped on Newegg between August 13th and September 18th of this year, you should immediately get in touch with your card issuer or bank to get new cards issued. Alternatively, it's all a great big scheme because Newegg sees all of the prices rising, RAM vendors are benefiting, video card vendors are benefiting, and they said, we, we really need more money. How can we do it? And that was the solution. Uh, so either way, they were affected. They admitted it. And definitely get in touch with your banks or card issuers so that you're not adversely affected yourself. Hardware sales for the week. RAM prices. This is actually, if you normally skip this segment, this one's actually worth listening to because RAM prices are expected to slide downwards through fourth quarter of 2018 against initial predictions and even into 2019. And this is despite the first news item talking about Samsung potentially intentionally limiting their supply of memory. So we don't know how that's going to affect things yet. But if you look at prices right now, RAM's finally coming down just a, just a tiny bit. And the demand is somewhat flatlining in the desktop enthusiast space. The really expensive RTX cards certainly don't help that because the amount of uh, the attachment rate to brand new system builds will be lower overall. And that could benefit us all if the RAM prices can come down a little bit. So this is assuming that memory makers don't start decelerating their memory production as Samsung might be doing, as indicated by Bloomberg previously. So still, the past week has netted some price dips in RAM kits. Generally, 16 gigabyte DDR4 kits with frequencies in excess of 3,000 megahertz have stayed north of $150. And we've seen a few kits slide below that, finally. Like there's, for example, a Team T4 16 gigabyte 3000 megahertz kit for $130. There's a G Skill Rip Jaws kit for $135, and that's 3200 megahertz. And there's a Team Vulcan kit for $120 with a promo. And of course, those prices move around all the time. But the idea is, even if those exact deals aren't still up by the time this video is, it might be worth looking around at RAM again if it's been a while because it's kind of coming down. So that's it for this week. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to pick up one of our mod mats, one of our shirts 
or any of our other products to help us out directly, or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get the recent bonus episode of SGN. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.